OK, uh, I had three different class periods, all of which ended at uh, totally different spots because of all the craziness yesterday. So um, help me out with where exactly we left. Now, we had gone over the definition of symbolism and it had some brainstorming, correct? Yeah. That's, uh, that's about it? OK. Michael? Uh, we left off when you had the picture of the triangle. Prism. Yes, there you go. Thank you, Michael. Excellent. All right. Then some quick review. Uh, somebody give me a definition of a symbol. What is a symbol? Uh, Priyanka. Um, a concrete object, object representing abstract ideas. Very good. So two important qualities of that definition. First of all, the object must be concrete. Now usually that means you can touch it. However, sometimes that simply means that you can see it. And I, I did make a reference yesterday to Fitzgerald's use of color symbolism in The Great Gatsby that you'll read next year. So don't be, uh, don't be fooled. Sometimes a symbol is not necessarily something you can touch like, uh, like a mockingbird or a bee. It might just be something you can see or hear. And the second important quality of that definition is the fact that ideas is plural. Symbols represent multiple ideas and that idea can shift, that meaning can shift throughout a story and uh, throughout usage, depending upon how the author is applying it. OK, that's the first point. Second point, in our analysis of symbolism, we're always looking to answer two different questions. Can anybody give me either one of those questions? Yes, Ian. What does it represent? Does it represent? And Kristen. Um, what does the author say about What's the author saying about that thing that it represents? So if we know that a mockingbird represents innocence, and to kill a mockingbird, that's one of its meanings. And then what is Harper Lee saying about innocence? Can you answer that question? Julian. Oh, actually, you can, because it's possible to kill a mockingbird, right? Yeah. So you can kill innocence. And we could say that Jem loses his innocence, Tom Robinson dies, and Boo Radley is uh, alive but very harmed. So it's not quite what we're saying. Like that's right, that it, it is um, immoral to violate innocence. That's one comment. Also, that innocence is constantly under violent threat. That there is this concern, this danger associated with in innocence because of its fragility. Mockingbirds are fragile creatures. All birds, well, maybe not all birds. An emu seems pretty beastly. <laughs> but most birds are fragile creatures. And therefore, um, innocence is fragile and requires some, some tending. Those are the important parts of our definition. And. Yes, uh, Michael is correct that I did use the visual metaphor of a prism to indicate uh, one object uh, spreading out a number of different related ideas to help us understand this concept. What I'd like to do today is very briefly apply this to the bees and secret life of bees. We don't have time to for a full exploration of that symbol. And then I'd like to shift into a full exploration of the trees from a separate piece. So let's talk about. Uh, how we do this, how we reach the answers to those questions. You have two questions. One is the question of representation. What does it represent? Second is the question of comment. What's the author saying? How do we reach those questions? Well, how do you reach those questions? How do you reach those answers? If you want to pr make a claim to me in writing that in To Kill a Mockingbird, Harper Lee uses the mockingbird to represent innocence. How are you going to support that claim? <coughs> details from the novel, right? So you need details from the novel. You need all sorts of evidence because symbolism is complex. You need to pour through a novel and pull out page references, quotations, all sorts of evidence. So these are the four questions you ask yourself. When you are gathering evidence about symbolism, when you're gathering details, you ask yourself these four questions. And this is the method I'm, that I'm proposing to you. We're at the third step in understanding this method. The first step was definition of symbol. The second step is understanding the two questions we have to answer. The third step is understanding how we generate data or details. First question is fairly simple. How do the characters interact with the symbol? Second question, what does that symbol do in the book? The third, sometimes uh, is, is a little bit confusing to students, so I'd, I'd like to maybe add a little bit to it, clarify. Uh, 
What are the necessary qualities of the symbol? And by this, I mean, what do all instances of this thing in the real world have in common? I just gave you one about birds. All mockingbirds are what, according to what I just said? Fragile. Fragile. Thank you, Colin. That's a necessary quality of the symbol. All mockingbirds are what else? Not necessarily. I've known some mockingbirds who are definitely guilty. <laughs> Omar. They can all sing, so they are all capable of beauty, right? They're all capable of beautiful um, song. They're also all natural objects. They're not artificial. A lot of students overlook some of the necessary and very obvious characteristics of a thing. Why would Harper Lee pick a mockingbird? Why would she pick that thing? She could pick anything she wants. She's a writer and a good one at that. Why would she pick a mockingbird? Because it's fragile? Because it has a beautiful song, and because it comes from nature. It's part of the fabric of our existence. It's not artificial. It's not made up. Innocence is something that naturally exists. So she's telling you a lot about innocence through her selection of the mockingbird. Um, lastly, this is uh, a little bit of the complementary question to this. Not just what are the necessary qualities, but specifically how does the author describe the thing in the novel? How does the author use imagery to describe it? And your best example of this will probably come from our discussion of the rivers in a separate piece, where you can say, OK, a river is a river and has these qualities. But this river has these qualities because this is how Knowles describes it. These four questions, uh, let's apply them very briefly to